Hello and welcome back. So this is episode 18. I'll just do one more quick commit. In the last episode, I created basic uh, gun firing mechanism. So once again, if you want to jump in at this point, just download the commit I just made. It'll be on GitHub forever. Uh, in this video, we're just going to keep working on the gun. Uh, I want it to hit the enemy and then eventually kill them. So, I think the, the most logical next step would be to create some sort of health on the, on the enemy. We could put it within the movement script, but it makes more sense to have each script sort of serve its own purpose. So we're going to call this Axon Health. Or just to make it more generic, enemy health. Um, it, it's it's generic enough that uh, pretty much any enemy we create should die from getting hit by bullets. Okay, so now you can see that it is on Axon. Go ahead and open that up. Uh, let's give him some health. Public health equals... Oh, whoops. Yeah, and remember, um, you always need to give a type to your variables, so we're just going to use int for the health. Public health equals 400. And public, um, it's the it's the accessor. It it lets you um, edit the value in the inspector. If I changed that to private, it would not show up down here. Um, but now he's got some health. And when he gets when when he hits the bullets, we want to call it a different method. We'll say damage. Int amount. And this minus equals means um, take whatever the health is and subtract this amount from it. Uh, and then and then uh, apply that to the health. You, you can't just do health minus amount because that's that's just a standard mathematical operation and you're not assigning that to anything. Um, the equals essentially assigns, it, it takes health, subtracts the amount, and then assigns that back into the health variable. Um, and then the next thing we want to do is listen for the collision event. And it's been a while since I've programmed something like this, so I'm actually going to look it up. So, uh, Unity Collision. We'll, we'll just start with that. Um, uh, ne the, the event is going to be called, like, on collision, something like that. Um, but but if, if you don't know that going into it, you can just search Unity Collision. And then we're just going to take the first one that looks like it would make sense. On collision enter. That sounds like it would be an event that gets fired. Um, but we don't we don't want a video collision. Um, this doesn't really help us. Let's go to collider. On collision enter. That sounds promising. Click on that. On collision enter is called when this collider slash rigid body has begun touching another rigid body or collider. Oh, so that sounds useful. So we know for a fact that as soon as a bullet touches the collider on Axon, uh, this method is going to be fired. So why don't we just um, why don't we just recreate that method? So void on collision enter, and make sure you spell that right. Um, I've made this mistake before. There is one S, two L's. If you spell it wrong, the event will not be fired. Collision. Collision. And so, uh, when, when Unity calls this event for us, it's going to give us um, a variable called collision of type collision. And, th and then we can do something with that. For now, we'll just say collision detected. Uh, 
And I'm not seeing anything printed to the console, so there's probably something wrong. Uh, and and I, I don't want the console to be spammed with this moving command. So let's go ahead and comment this out. Same thing with attacking. And now it uh, it, it looked like... Where'd it go? One collision was det was detected. So let's try this again. Now that we're not being spammed. Oh yeah. So it's it's definitely seeing the collisions. Uh, one more thing to note. It detected a collision before we even fired a bullet. That's because the character collided with the ground. Um, so we need to make sure we're listening for the right type of collision. So to do that, we're just going to put the bullet on its own layer. Uh, to get to the layers, you can click on... Just click on any object, and then go layer, add layer. And now we're going to create a new layer for bullets. Uh, let's call it projectiles. More generic. Um, and then click on bullet, and then make sure you apply that layer to the bullet. Uh, onto, onto the actual prefab. So now, now that the bullet is on the projectiles layer, uh, we're going to go back to the axon health, and we're only going to listen for the collision if collision dot layer uh, dot collider dot layer. There we go. Collision dot game object dot layer equals whatever layer that the collision was supposed to be on, which is layer nine. So now, um, now when the when the object collides with the ground, we won't be putting collision detected. Let's just verify that. Yep, nothing popped up. And you'll notice we can run into him. He's not detecting the collision with us. He only ever detects the collisions with the bullet. Exactly as we want. So go ahead and delete that. And I, I want to destroy the bullet. Um, when it gets hit, so destroy game object dot collision. Oops, sorry. Destroy collision dot game object. Can't type today. Like that. So now the bullets should actually disappear when I hit the guy. Like that. And we're going to go ahead and damage Axon by, let's make each bullet worth 12 points of damage. And then we're going to log to the console, whatever his new health is. So it should start at 400 and it should go down. And very quickly you can see we made it to negative 476 and it'll just keep going down. We're firing a lot of bullets. So let's go ahead and make each bullet worth one point of damage. Yeah, that that seems like about the amount of time it should take to kill him. Alright, so once his health is less than zero, we want him to die. So we can create another method for that. And we'll just call that method die. Uh, we only want to call that method if health is less than 1. So as soon as it reaches 0, we tell him to die. And when we do that, um, we want to make sure he stops moving. And we want to update his animator so that he sort of falls onto his face. Um, I'm controlling most of his animations through this axon movement script, so I, I want to keep I want to keep the animations controlled there. So we're gonna have a method called dot dead. Right? Yeah. Actually, I, I'm I'm gonna take this method. I'm gonna cut it out, 
and I'm going to post it, paste it over here. Make sure that it's public. And now you can see die is red. That's because we no longer see it. Like it's it's no longer here. It's not going to be called. It's going to create a compilation error because it doesn't exist. It, it's in the wrong script. It doesn't exist. But what we can do is broadcast message and then give the method name of die. And that's just going to call the die method on on any script attached to Axon. Um, I, I hope that makes sense. I, I'm just I'm just broadcasting this message that says, if you have a method called die, please use it. Um, don't. And then uh, I'm just going to put this in here. You don't need to worry about that, but um, I just like to put that in there. So now in axon movement, this die method should be called, and let's let's verify that it that it is in fact being called. Die. Maybe I should give him a little bit less hit points. All right, so we we finally um, got it. We finally got his health down, and you can see it did call the dying method from axon movement. And now I'm going to create another variable called private uh, bool dead, and we're going to set that to false on its own. And when dead is true, um, I don't want to do anything. I, d I don't want to update his movement. I don't want to update his animations. I don't want to update anything. All I want him to do is to just engage with the death animation and then stop forever. So I'm just going to say if dead equals true, uh, return. And so, and then we we got to make sure we set that to true here. So when he's dying, dead equals true. And then that's going to make sure that uh, we we stop updating his rotation. We stop, uh, yeah, we stop updating all that nonsense. And we're, now we're just going to engage the death animation. So to do that, we can do axon animator dot set bool, and we're just going to call this dying and set that to true. Now within our animator we need to create that variable so we're going to create a bool called dead. I already forgot what I called it. Dead. Um, now we need to find that animation. Imported Monster 3, Creature, Creature 1, and whichever one of these is called Die. Die right there. So we're going to drag that in, and that can happen either from Creature 1 Run or from Creature 1 Attack. Make transition here, make transition here, and we're only going to do it when Dead is true. We don't need an exit transition because once he's dead, he's dead. So now, whichever state we're in, if his health goes below zero, if dead is triggered, he's going to fall on his face. I think that'll work. Not totally sure. We'll try it out. He's certainly taking a lot of damage. Die. <laughs> What's happening? That was actually ridiculously awesome. So I think he's rolling now because uh, if I pause this, <laughs> that was so awesome. Uh, you can see he's got this capsule collider. And it's kind of like a pill shape, and so it once the pill is on its side, it just sort of rolls away. He rolled up the hill, and now he's rolling back down. 
<sighs> There's a few different ways we could fix that. Um, not really sure how I want to go about this. That was hilarious, though. All right, so let's leave play mode. Uh, when when he dies, I just need to reset his rotation so that he's standing straight up. And then I think I want to set... Well, I'm not sure. How do I want to do this? Yeah, first let's just make him stand up. So I think the easiest way to do that is to say transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot identity. And let's make let's make him die a lot faster so we can test this. So when he takes damage, he's gonna, he's gonna take a thousand points of damage. All right, so he's still totally freaked out. Um. Let's just destroy the rigid body at that point. So get component rigid body dot enabled. Why won't it let me disable it? Ugh. Rigid body our body equals get component. Uh, it's not letting me remove the component. Give me one second. All right. So for some reason we can't disable it. We're just going to just destroy it with this method. Um, so first, first I destroy the rigid body, and then stand him up and that should fix it we'll see what happens there we go he fell on his face I don't like how he spun around so let's go ahead and undo the part where we set his rotation it might be enough to just destroy the rigid body yeah that worked Well, now he falls on his face, at least. Uh, let's make him eat some more bullets first. I just want to make sure this is, like, a satisfying enough death. Oh, no, he's chasing me. Rawr. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, cutting this video off here. Thanks for watching, guys.